Hey guys, I'm Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. Without further ado, welcome to another episode of Q10. If you have no idea what Q10 is, please watch one of my earlier videos that explains exactly what you need to know. But I will say again that if you're watching this video on a phone or a tablet, you won't be able to watch the video in its intended form due to the fact that you need annotations and currently they're not available for either or one. So if you'd like to truly experience this video in the way it was meant to, please do so on the desktop. But with all that said and done, let's get into the video. Due to one of the comments that advised the topic getting quite a few likes in my last video, I decided to use that for the topic of this video, which is making a Q10 about technology. So I do have 10 questions about technology, and they range from not just computers and stuff, but just inventions in general and the way technology was applied. So here we go. Q1. In 1956, IBM created the first magnetic hard drive designed for data storage. It weighed about 550 pounds, or about 250 kilograms, and was about the size of a giant cabinet. I'll have a picture of it behind the questions. But can you guess how many megabytes this massive behemoth of a storage device had? If you guess five, then you are correct. The machine was called the IBM 305 RAMIC, or the Random Access Method of Accounting and Control, and basically is the grandfather to all modern technology that uses electronic devices for storage, like computers or my camera or smartphones or anything. So you can thank IBM for that. Good job. Q2. Do you know who invented the light bulb? Now if I tricked you with thinking it was Thomas Edison, it wasn't. It was a Canadian man of the name of Henry Woodward. He also had a partner who helped him with some aspects of it, named Matthew Evans. Thomas Edison bought the patent off them, and perfected the device, which was the light bulb. They used a gas within it, where Edison used a vacuum. But Edison was also able to mass produce it, and he created a very efficient light bulb, but not the first one. So the light bulb goes to Canada. Canada! <laughs> Q3. Which one of these spray-on products is an actual invention and is said to revolutionize all the markets that it can be applied to? The answer was spray-on clothing. As crazy as it sounds, watch the video that I have in my description and you'll be able to see that it actually is a fabric that is sprayed on. It's kind of cool because it's sterile so it can also be used for bandages. But it is machine washable, I'm guessing it'd probably be a very tight fit, but you can take it off and you can reuse it. They're also thinking about being able to actually just make the whole fabric reusable by replacing it somehow in a can and then respraying it on someone. But could you imagine how awesome it would be? Yeah. I think I'll wear a blue t-shirt today. Might not be up your alley, but hey, who knows what the future has in store. Q4. The US Air Force put it up to themselves to make a very affordable supercomputer. So in the process of doing this, they found that if they bought 1,760 of this device, they were able to make one of the best supercomputers available. What was the item that they bought 1,760 of in order to make themselves a supercomputer? Now the correct answer was the PlayStation. Xbox fans be flaming. Of a PC gamer myself. They made the cheapest supercomputer ever and it had about 500 teraflops and when they put it together the Air Force said, and I quote, the organization is calling it the fastest interactive computer in the entire defense department. And they don't have to worry about Red Ring. Haha. <laughs> Red Ring. I actually own an Xbox, not a PS3, so. Q5. Now, the co train company CSX, which works on transportation, claims that they can make one of the most fuel-efficient trains out there. So can you tell me how many miles slash kilometers this train can go on just 16 gallons of fuel? If you guessed 500 miles or 805 kilometers, you are correct. They state that this is pretty much the cheapest and most fuel efficient way to transfer goods. It's safe too, and it might be the future of transportation. They've taken tons of trucks off the road, which even though some people are arguing about because it gets rid of jobs, it's also safer, there's less emissions, and it's using a lot less natural resources. So who knows, that might just be where the shipping will head one day. Q6. The first webcam ever was invented at the Oxford University in 1991. But do you know what its intended purpose was to watch? If you guessed the coffee pot, that is correct. And the facility had obviously labs and places, but they also had a lounge where they'd have a coffee pot. 
And what they wanted people to do is instead of having to walk back and forth or go there and there'd be no coffee, they had a webcam that people could access anywhere throughout the university, or the world at that matter, and they could see how much coffee was in the coffee pot without having to walk all the way to the other side of the university. It had a live cast for almost 10 years, and they ended it around the year 2000. But you can find pictures of it, and the actual coffee pot was sold for thousands of dollars. So you can thank coffee pots for the invention of the webcam. Q7. Which one of these world leaders can you thank for modern canning? An army marches on its stomach, as Napoleon once said. The answer is Napoleon. Napoleon put out a prize of 12,000 francs for whoever could invent the most efficient way of preserving food. And that reward went to Nicolas Appet. He showed that if you were to put food in what was a jar and a cork on top, and you were to superheat it, you can actually kill the germs and keep food lasting an extremely long time, much longer than it could with just salt or other means. And with the 12,000 francs that he won, he started his own canning company. So you can thank Napoleon for canning and his massive desire to conquer Europe. War brings out innovation. Q8. YouTube is the largest video sharing website in history. But YouTube was not intended to be about video sharing. Can you tell me what the three people who left PayPal oh so long ago intended to make their own website, YouTube, initially about? The answer was dating. They had the intention of making a dating site that used videos in order for people to get a better understanding on who they would be dating. But what happened was, is due to the fact that they tried to find videos on certain things, they found that it was just easier for them to post videos on whatever on the website. And it eventually developed from there and became what we know today as YouTube. So in all reality, it changed a little bit from what the initial idea was, and thank God. Q9. 3D printers are going to change the world one day. It's a new technology that will pretty much allow you to get the blueprints of anything and you'll be able to copy whatever you want, whether it be like finding old bionicles or making your own anything, utensils. You won't have to worry about depending on people for small objects. But being that 3D printers can do so much, they do have some limitations. So which one of these things can a 3D printer not print? The answer is CDs. Since most 3D printers have a hard time printing different types of materials on things, let alone giving them the right components in order to be able to do what they need to do, as a CD would. But they do have the capability to print organs, as well as replaceable parts, and even guns. All of which have been shown to be possible. And one day, we will be able to make all of these simply through a printer, which is crazy to think about, but think of the lives that it will save or ruin. And Q10. And for my last question, which one of these inventions, great feats of technology, was invented last? And yes, it was the wheeled luggage. Obviously it was the odd one out, but it was kind of a funny thing due to the fact that all of these were invented before it. Luggage that had wheels was invented in 1970 and was first put in stores in Macy's in 1970 and late October. So we've been watching TV, driving cars, and walked on the moon long before we realized that it would be much simpler to drag around luggage if it had wheels. And you can thank Bernard Sato for that. So I hope you guys learned a few things. If you knew some of these, I'm quite impressed. If not, then you learned something. If you would like to advise any topics for future Q10 videos, please leave a comment in the description. Also tell me what you think about this series, whether you liked the questions, you didn't like them, or anything you'd want to know. Because I want to be able to make this the best it could possibly be, and I can only do that by asking my awesome viewers. So, with that said, please support Q10 and my channel, The Factoid. You can do so by watching my videos, liking them, favoriting them, and if you happen to want to, subscribe. It really is motivational, and it's awesome. So thank you for watching. Have a good one.